Now this is a plain old staircase that works wonderfully during the day. But as soon as it gets dark, it becomes a death trap. Okay, I'm a bit exaggerating here, but I almost missed the step more than once. And no, I will not simply turn on the big lights to see better, because that would kill my sleep mood. So instead, I wanted to install small lights next to each step. But what I found online didn't really match with what I had in mind. I mean, most of those solutions either use rechargeable lights that I hate or require tons of wiring all around the stairs, which I cannot easily hide since my girlfriend said, we just got this staircase, you will not damage it in any way. So obviously I had to come up with another solution and thus spent around two months to create these LED strip inspired modular and thus daisy chainable PCBs, which are easy to mount next to a staircase and react to human presence. In theory, this was my perfect solution to the problem. And in this video, I want to show you how I made them, how they work just fine individually and how they fail terribly at the end when I put them all together. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, who just recently launched their all new PCB layout service, which is a complete design to production service. That means all you need is just a schematic and JLC PCB will assist you to transform it into a PCB design, source the components for it and then even assemble it. So it is basically an all-in-one solution that can improve your design efficiency and shorten lead times. Especially when it comes to complex six layer PCBs, for which JLC PCB is the top choice because they offer free ANIC and upgraded via InPads. All of that for a price of only $2 for five PCBs. And if you want to save even more, then join their Facebook group to get six layer PCB coupons. Now first off, I had to think about how to attach stuff to my staircase. The one thing that of course stood out was this big lip here that comes with a width of 4.5 cm. So to utilize it, I got myself three pieces of two meter long timber beams that come with these dimensions. I cut them to size and joined them together with the help of wooden dowels and glue in order to form one long piece that fits perfectly onto the staircase lip. Now onto this timber beam we could now easily mount some kind of LED strip. And what do we use to make such strips look pretty? Of course an aluminium profile. So I ordered some extra white ones from the internet checked them once they arrived and was happy with their quality and thus next used my router in order to create a fitting indentation for them in the long timber, which was easier said than done. Eventually though, through the help of a chisel and half a day of work, I got a suitable cavity. So next I painted all the wood, drilled some extra holes through it and then use those as markings so that I could drill into the wall behind it, added some wall plugs and then finally secured it all close to the staircase without damaging it in any way. And after then adding the aluminium profiles to it all, I think we got a pretty decent mechanical base here. So time for the electronics and no, like I said before, normal LED strips don't cut it here because my idea was that each step only turns on its light when it detects a human passing by. To accomplish that, I firstly measured the exact distance between each step, which was 31 cm. And the width of my aluminium profile was 2.1 cm, which means that I need to make a PCB with these measurements, onto which we got LED lights, an LED driver 
some kind of distance slash proximity sensor and a microcontroller that not only controls all of this, but also can send and receive signals from the PCB before and after it, so that we can light up the stair before and after me. In my head, this theory sounded pretty good, and thus I next searched through some online electronic stores to find suitable components. Now for most of them, it didn't take long to decide, except for the distance sensor, where it was quite hard to find a good balance between price and performance. Eventually though, I found this VCNL 4200 infrared sensor that not only comes with an integrated ambient light sensor, which will be useful to detect when it is dark, but it can also detect things up to 1.5 meter, which is suitable for my 0.9 meter wide steps. And with a price of under 2 euro, it seemed like a good choice. But to still be on the safe side, I firstly got myself the development board for the sensor, because this way it was super easy to test with an Arduino and some i 2 cx sample code. Here you can see the distance value that changes as I get closer, which sadly it does not increase linear though, but it should still be suitable for the project. And by the way, since this sensor uses infrared light, I'm forced to use such a clear cover for the aluminum profile. I know that the LED light would have looked way better with a diffuse cover, but sadly the infrared sensor does not work behind it. But anyway, next I also tested the ambient light sensing, and as you can see, it detects very nicely how dark it is. So all in all, I was happy with the sensor, and thanks to the datasheet of its development board, I immediately knew what complementary components it requires to work. So I added those to my own schematic, along with all the other components I ultimately chose for this project. As a quick summary, I got a 5 volt and 3.3 volt regulator here, to basically power the distance sensor as well as the ADtiny402 microcontroller. This microcontroller might look small, but it has enough pins for all functions, integrated I2C for the sensor communication and can do PWM to dim the brightness of the LEDs, and best of all, it can be programmed through only one pin. And last but not least, we got the AL8860 LED driver here, which in a nutshell takes the 12 volt input voltage and steps it down efficiently so that around 150 milliamps flow through the LEDs. This current is by the way the maximum these LEDs can handle, and I think two of them will be enough for one step. And with that being said, it was time to turn my schematic into a PCB design. Most important was of course making sure that the size was exactly right and that I could daisy chain the PCBs together through their power lines and two data lines. And after 4 hours of designing, I gotta say that I was quite happy with the outcome, and thus I ordered 20 of them from JLC PCB, which I then received after a week of waiting. And the first thing I of course had to try out was whether they would fit inside the aluminum profile, which they did perfectly. So next I took three of them for a proper spin, which meant I spread solder paste onto them, positioned all of the components and let them a bit awkwardly reflow solder with the help of my tiny reflow plates. Now you probably already noticed that I didn't yet solder on the AD Tiny microcontroller, and I did that to firstly test whether the LEDs with driver and distance sensor would work just fine, and as you can see in this Arduino example, they do just that. So next, I soldered the microcontrollers to the boards, learned how to program the AD Tinies, which was super simple, 
and tried uploading pretty much the same Arduino code as before, which worked wonderfully, but it seems like the PWM function was broken. To fix that, I had to manually configure the timer B, and just like that, everything worked perfectly, even with the tiny microcontrollers. So time to solder the three boards together and come up with some code for the final projects, which let's be honest, was not well written by me and with lots of if statements, because I'm not the best programmer. But eventually I got to a point where I was rather happy with the result of the code, which means next it was time to go big and solder a total of 14 PCBs for my staircase. After spending 4 hours doing just that, I checked whether they all powered up fine, had to repair some of them, created pairs of two, programmed them all and thus finally got myself a big batch of completely functional staircase light PCBs. So to end this project, I added double sided tape to all the aluminium profiles, secured them inside the long timber beam, slid all the PCBs into place and soldered their power and data lines together. And at this point I would have loved to say that everything worked like anticipated, but as you can see, all LEDs are constantly on, which was certainly not the goal. Now believe me or not, but I spent 3 days on the staircase trying to find and fix the problem. I pretty quickly not only found out that the distance sensor still works just fine, but also that I forgot to add a pull down resistor here for the inputs. But no problem, we can just use the integrated pull up resistors of the AD Tiny and flip this diode here to pull the inputs to ground, which meant I had to flip 14 diodes on this staircase. This sadly did not fix the problem, but I noticed some high frequency noise on the power lines meaning time to add some bigger capacitors to each board. This didn't help either though, so let's try smaller pull up resistors, which also didn't really help. So let's just disconnect all data lines between the boards and just use the distance sensors, which as you can see also did not work for all boards. Yeah, it was a never ending story, which ultimately ended with me realizing that I need to redesign the board without switching converter and probably some filters, to get rid of the noise that is probably messing with the ground. But to be honest, right now I need some time away from this project, because it was truly frustrating. But trust me when I say that I will come back to it because I loved the initial idea, the heavy lifting is already done by now, the LED lights look pretty sweet and I feel like there is nothing like this on the market. So if you feel like helping, then you can already download all the project files from the video description and maybe share some feedback what went wrong with my design. And I hope you still enjoyed this video and maybe learned a thing or two along the way. If so, consider supporting me through Patreon to keep the show going. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time.